what does everyone feel about the film? Let's go around the room. Let's, let's get some opinions. I really liked the movie. Um, I thought it was funny. And I think there's a tremendous future for making this wonderful resource we have in South Florida available all across the state. Sing along at home and feel free to dance. Great to see so many of you. We obviously miss seeing you um, in April in person, but what a great way to kind of kick off our summer together and uh, get back together and remember why we just love outshine. This is a real special time for us, and we're real excited. We hope all of you will tell your friends and bring everybody to the event. everybody. Um, this is Victor Jimenez, your executive director for the Outshine Film Festival. Uh, and welcome to this, to this pre-recorded virtual Q&A for Rift. Uh, hopefully all of you just finished watching it and uh, are going to be enjoying it. We have, actually, we have three great gre uh, guests from the film tonight. First, let me introduce writer, director Erlinger Thornston. Welcome. Hi, Victor. Hi, everybody. Thanks Hello. for having me. And then next we have um, one of the lead actors, Bjorn Stephenson. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Great to see you guys. And lastly, and not leastly, uh, other lead actor, Ziggy Poor. Hi. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you. First of all, again, um, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, much appreciated. I'm quite positive that our audience definitely enjoyed the film. It's definitely up my alley. I, I tend to like uh, like gothic um, uh, films, more moody, more atmospheric, as opposed to gory. Um, so Riff was definitely up my alley. Uh, so uh, my first question is actually to Erlinger. You're the writer and the director. So can you just tell me, like, I guess, what was the process? Where did the idea come from? And um, how long did it take you to write and then and, and get the film going? Right. Um, it was kind of a, an interesting process, the whole thing. Um, I had been living in New York where I went to school and I had to come back home to Iceland for kind of like an uncertain amount of time. And I really wanted to use that time well and like make something. And I had also just kind of gone through a breakup of my own. <laughs> so um, I had that on my mind, like I was trying to kind of work through that. And I also wanted to do a movie that I could, you know, um, something that I could do, you know, kind of on my own or like with my friends, something like, you know, small scale. So I was trying to think of like, what kind of stories can I do with only two actors? Um, and then that breakup that I had um, kind of influenced that. And um, I tend to work in the horror space anyway. So it made a lot of sense for me to do kind of a, like a spooky story with, you know, two guys out in the middle of nowhere. And uh, and it just kind of made sense to me that they were going or like had gone through a breakup and that the film was kind of about them dealing with kind of the the ghost of their past relationship. So that's kind of where the where the idea came from. And it didn't take very long to write, actually. I started writing, I mean, the whole process was kind of insane. Um, I started writing it in October, 2015, and we shot it in, we started shooting in March, 2016. So yeah, all, everything kind of came together in those, what, four, four or five months. Which is, it is an amazingly fast time period. Then um, for Bjorn and, and Ziggy, and I guess Bjorn first, like how did, you're how did you get involved with the film? Like, did you already know Erlinger? Like, was there a casting process? Tell me, tell me each of you how you, you got involved with the film. Yeah, it was kind of funny, uh, the process, because uh, at the time I was working a lot in the theater and uh, and I was just waiting for Easter break because that's the only break that we get actors that stage actors. So we worked around, uh, you know, Christmas time. So Easter break is always like at the end of the road. You know, you're going to get we're going to get there and we're going to do nothing for a week. So and I get this email from this guy talking about a film they want to do in my Easter break. And I just said, well, thank you. No. And I just, <laughs> I just said no. Uh, but my wife actually said, uh, wait a minute, let's check out his stuff. And, and she actually just told me to do it. And, 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 and I read the script and I loved it. 
uh, and it really, like Erlinger said, it really went fast from there uh, because I, I loved his work. I loved how he had, uh, loved his view on things and uh, generally a great person. And also uh, the script I thought was really nice. And uh, just, uh, just the setting really appealed to me. And then I just was really afraid of who would be the, the, you know, the love of my, you know, the love interest and, and the because, and when I heard when Siki did it because it was supposed to be the uh, be Einar, then I was just yeah I mean because we know each other a little bit from the theater, but uh, I was really proud of that decision because I said no. You remember that, Ellinger? <laughs> I think yeah. I think in my in my mind I had kind of just like wiped that away. So yeah. it's all positive, <laughs> positive thoughts that I because I really guess. wanted to do it, but I was trying. To, I have to be positive and say no and just listen to myself. And but I mean, I'm really glad that we. It was it was a tough job because we were me and Sigi were driving back and forth when we were shooting. And how long is the drive from Reykjavik? Like, like two and a half hours. Yeah, and sometimes longer in the winter because of the roads and stuff. Yeah. And Siki was working at the National Theater, and I was working in the Reykjavik Theater. And he would pick me up at around you know 11, and we would drive, and we started shooting the day after. And that was like for you know a month or so. So it was it was quite hectic, but you know really worth it. Yeah, yeah. my answer is exactly the same as Piersi. <laughs> <laughs> same answer. <laughs> but uh, I didn't say no though. I. I asked who was uh, the other guy, and it was Pjössi, and I was so pleased with that that I just said, yeah, straight away. Oh, that's uh, oh, it's always good. It's also good that you 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 guys kind of knew each other from beforehand, especially yeah. when you, you, you had to do the uh, the more intimate scenes. The uh, Erlinger, the, um, one of the great things about the film that I love was, you know, the cinematography, the shots of the, you know, actually your general shots, the way you block just the exterior shots, the, the stuff in, inside the spaces also um, was really, you know, beautiful. And it was a great, you know, um, you know, showing of, of Iceland. Did, did you already have the locations in mind? What was the, the process of finding the actual locations that you used? And then also just go into the detail of like your, the, the specifics of how you actually block certain shots where they were like, actually almost like, like, like a great, uh, paintings, compositions, or like, you know, great photographs? Um, yeah, so when I was writing, I when I started writing, I did not have any specific location in mind, but I, I feel like kind of in the middle of the process, I was, I was talking uh, with my family about, you know, what the idea was and, you know, kind of what happened in the movie. And uh, it was actually my mom who suggested um, that location and Snifelsnes where we shot because she grew up there. Um, and um, when I was telling her about, you know, it's, you know, a cabin and I want like a landscape that's kind of sparse and, and super cold and kind of raw. Um, she like she started picturing that specific area. Um, and so I went there after she told me about it just to kind of do a little bit of a scout. And then it kind of everything just kind of fit together perfectly. And, and the stuff that kind of didn't fit what I had already written, I just kind of made it made it you know, rewrote it so it would work. Um, so yeah, kind of halfway through the writing process, that location um, became the location. And uh, and I think it became kind of a, almost like a, a character in the film, you know, in the way uh, that it kind of, I don't know, it kind of speaks to what they're going through, like the kind of the coldness and kind of the, the sparseness of that, that area. Um, and when it came to like the cinematography, um, the cinematographer, uh, his name is John Wakayama Carey. He he went to school with me in New York, um, and we had worked together quite a bit. Um, so we had a little bit of um, a shorthand already. Of like he knew my style, I knew his style, and there was only you know the it was only two of them on the camera crew. It was him shooting it, and then he had his best friend um, Adam, who was the gaffer, and there was like no other camera crew. Um, and we did it really kind of quick and and uh, and fast. But um, I think a lot of those locations kind of lended themselves to those kind of, you know, portrait, like paint, painting style uh, images. Some of them, even like from that first like time when I scouted, I had taken pictures 
and they some of those like kind of ended up really close to what you um, see on screen. Um, and then also just kind of because we're talking about the blocking, because we had so little time to shoot, um, we tried to kind of block everything, especially like you know with um, the actors. Um, so we had very few setups with the camera, but we kind of would slide the camera, like dolly the camera back and forth in a little bit. So it feels like there's more shots mm -hmm. than there actually are. Um, and I think that's how we made it, made it the whole thing work. Mm -hmm. And correct me if I'm wrong, Erlingud. Uh, uh, I kind of remember the script being all covered in snow, you know, yeah. Yeah. it was supposed to be really snowy. Yes, and there were some there were some scenes that would like sees the footprints in the snow and follows the footprint, and right. then just the week before it just rained and rained and rained and rained and rained, <laughs> yeah. and there was no snow. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, the weather is like never your friend on a on a film shoot, but I think I think in the end it it ended up just being to our advantage. I think the look yeah. of the film is really special and it would i mean it probably would have looked really nice with the snow too but it would have been a totally different feeling so um i think it all kind of ended up being working to our in our favor um but yeah there was a little bit of a headache kind of trying to re figure out <laughs> you know the footsteps and like blood drops of blood in the snow and then there's no snow <laughs> and stuff like that the uh, interesting point the the weather not helping you out i, I it, one of the things i actually kind of liked about it was when you were when it was daytime, I guess because there was no so it never you know though you were isolated it never felt desolate and I think I kind of like that it, it was a good contrast with the night scenes where it's so dark and mm -hmm. you are like kind of scary like for me personally I, I kind of actually like the fact that it, the day scenes weren't that desolate I mean yeah you're isolated but you're not you know when you see just white snow everywhere it's almost like kind of a little bit <laughs> I'm sure it's a little bit depressing at least right. from my Miami point of view. <laughs> <laughs> But it was still very cold. I think yeah. if, even yeah, if you didn't have any snow, I think you yeah. talk about it's that. So a cold. Bjorn, <laughs> <laughs> especially when I, with that one conversation Bjorn had, where he was like outside, just like like you know, like little boxer briefs, talking to the neighbor, and then you're, yeah. you're walking out in your briefs. I'm like, I'm, I thought, I'm sure it's freezing there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's there's some scenes where I have this uh, monologue, and I can actually hear it when I watch the film that my face is just numb <laughs> i can actually hear how i pronounce the words that i'm not articulating really well because i'm just so <laughs> cold and my tongue isn't moving <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and also and also there's a scene with with a fake blood on my, my on my hand and it's dripping <laughs> yeah. and it's just froze on my hand <laughs> horrible yeah I, I remember that scene also when i was in, on my underpants in the because it, you know, have to take take a lot of shots. You know, it takes you know next shot, next shot, and just standing outside. You know, but you get used to it. You think? <laughs> you you, you <laughs> think? Really cold, especially because there's a glacier there that is 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 a really cold place, and the air is really is a really special air that goes into your nose, and it's like this is special. You know what I mean? I love <laughs> being there. It was. But it's like, yeah. As I say, you actually, I think there was a, what was it? I think the scene on the beach where it's kind of referenced where, oh, we were here last time. It was warm, but it was actually cold because of the wind off the glacier. Yeah. Something, yeah. you know, I can't relate to, but it was, an, it was an interesting that piece of dialogue that actually caught my attention and you, you're basically referencing it there. Yeah. I, out of curiosity, was that beach actually near that location? Like, or no, it was? Yeah. 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 I, not like walking distance, but pretty, pretty close. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so it was, it was kind of interesting. I was like, I, that was like a thought that popped my head. Is this like a like a memory flashback? Even though like in the scene they're saying that, you know, oh yeah, we used to come here in the thing. I was curious. One of um, my my favorite block scenes was actually the, it was a very intimate scene between the the, the two actors was when um, Gunnar, Bjorn, your character, was revealing, you know, what happened on your first time. Um, yeah. Like how was that scene, I, obviously the film, but also, like it's a very intimate and very powerful scene. Like, um, was it, did you guys rehearse it? Um, did you draw from a certain place? It was it was a very sincere and genuine scene, and yeah. and most impactful. Like, how, like how was it to actually create that scene and act in that scene? Um, anyone can go first. <laughs> Everybody was involved with it, so 
because you know Ziggy, you were very tender there. You know, just not react. Your acting was all the reactions to what mm -hmm. you're hearing. And then and actually, in in Bjorn, your your acting was just more like, you know, you you you, know, you kind of feel like he's a person that's experiencing this experience this thing, and it's a horrible thing, but yet you you kind of have a certain peace with it, and it, it's all yeah. being driven there. Like how how was actually creating that scene? Well, uh, always when I you know work in movies, there's like this one scene that is just in the back of your mind that you have to do, you know what I mean? That is like the scene, you know, that kind of stresses you out. And that scene was definitely that one. And uh, I remember we had like a week, it was on the schedule, it was a week until it. So I was just, you know, rehearsing and, and doing it. And so er Erlinger the day before said, uh, we rescheduled when we're doing it tomorrow. And you know, that happens all the time. And I was like, what? So. So I just, you know, I, I, you know, I went into into that scene feeling not ready, you know what I mean, and, but I mean, it's a really, it's a, it's a really, you know, it's a really fucked up thing, you know, what happened to this guy, I, I don't know, I just, I, I, I found something that, you know, I just worked with something that I had encountered and just, and it, it took two takes, it wasn't rehearsed or anything, it just. And I was talking to Siggy about it. Maybe he can relate this. All this time that we were working there, it, was, it sometimes felt that we were just the two of us because we had like a PlayStation with us and we just were hanging out so much, you know, just we, we were just, we came these best friends immediately. And I think that really, you know, boosted the that scene because we were so close already, you know what I mean? We, mm -hmm. we, we didn't have to fake everything, anything there. We were just best friends. So, and and it, it was almost like when Erlinger said, cut, is finished. I was like, what? You know, we're not going to rehearse this or? No, I'm. I, it was great. <laughs> so uh, it's really strange, you know. I, I can't say how it came to be or it just happened, you know what I mean, so, in a way. What, what do you think, Sigi? Yeah, I think it's... Uh... It's actually a good thing you didn't have the week to prepare. You yeah, just had yeah. to, because then I, I I sort of feel like it's really good in that scene with your with your lines that you are kind of remembering them as you go along, yeah. and that's how it's supposed to be. And yeah. and yeah, I, I loved your performance there. <laughs> <laughs> I can say for um, from my perspective, I mean, it was kind of the same thing. That was like the you know, even though it's it's like kind of not a lot a lot of flashy cinematography. It's it's very kind of still and static. But that was for me. That was also like the scene that you know, it, it was the scene that really needed to work for the, mm -hmm. for the whole film to work. Um, and like I said, it was a very small crew, and and that bedroom was like super small so I, I think I was sitting like on yeah the floor, like next to the bed <laughs> like a monitor um but like everybody like it like people had like tears in their eyes like everybody in the crew was just like like something that that Biasi did was just like everybody felt it so strongly and so emotionally which is why we didn't really have to do many takes I think we only did it was like two angles like from like looking down and then from the side. And I think we only did like two takes of each and yeah. we're done. Um, and that, that was a lot of dialogue. I mean, that was like a long, mm -hmm. long scene. And um, yeah, and Biasi did it like perfect from the from the first take. So yeah, that was, that was like one of those days where like you kind of are nervous. You're like worried, like, is this gonna, like, are we gonna need to like take a long time to get this right? And then when it was done, it was like such a such a big relief, and like, yeah, it was just you know we got this, and 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 I think everybody kind of felt like okay, this is this is gonna work, you know. If anything, nothing else works, this is definitely gonna work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then out of curiosity for each of you, and we'll, we'll start with, with, with Ziggy. The what what was your favorite scene in the movie um, together? Like actually making, or the one that was in the the finished product, like what what was the, what was the scene or part of the movie that you really thought was special and and um, you enjoyed? Uh, I liked the I really liked the 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 jump scares scare scenes <laughs> because uh, it's so weird to to uh, be be sneaking 
sneaking around somewhere and then have the director say now and then you go <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really funny and uh i yeah that that was really fun and i also really like the scene where where the where the lighting is all red and i'm 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 telling him to uh explain what he saw mm -hmm. last summer right yeah mm -hmm. or something it was so good Erlinger had this vision of how he wanted to, to look and me and Bjössi did not understand it at all <laughs> and, and he was always just okay look straight into the camera and then do this and that and we were like what that doesn't make any sense and he was trust me I know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. let's do it <laughs> And we're like, look there, and then oh, okay, okay, <laughs> and it's it gonna be bad, really good. You know, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out really good. So yeah, it was really beautiful. That. Mm -hmm. How about you, Bjorn? Yeah, uh, uh, this this whole process was just really nice. I really loved it. You know, I've just been going through it, but. Uh, that scene in the bed with me and Siggy was is just the most memorable one because that really, you know, you know, it 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 put a bow bow on it, you know, for me because it was just such a lovely scene and 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 really, you know, delicate and and it was really great work there just with everybody. I just, you know, I don't have a particular scene, but this, you know, all the process was just really memorable and i just really love that time you know what i mean so yeah i'm i'm also similar to siggy you know with his jump scares he actually taught me how to like because i always <laughs> over <laughs> 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 and you know i was always using my hands and that doesn't make any sense <laughs> uh that was kind of funny you know i i also loved all the scenes where we are arguing yeah, yeah. i i love to argue on screen throwing stuff at him and <laughs> you know actually your point and earlier you can answer your your kind of favorite scene to create too but you 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 kind of ziggy said something one of the things i liked about your what you did with your character is that you definitely conveyed you know enar's kindness but also that you know there was still you know like the i guess the anger management type issue and then yeah. it, it comes out in those uh those argument scenes yeah no, so I'm glad. Yeah, he's, he's 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 kind of a loose cannon. Yeah, yeah, he's a wild card. Trigger, a loose cannon. Yes. Um. Yeah, I think I think the for me like the it was the scene with Biasi definitely one of my favorites. Also, kind of the the mirror scene to that, which is with Siki when he is lying on the floor and telling his own story, and they're kind yeah. of filmed like in a similar like the the angles are similar. Um, that was like another moment where like you know it just. Like hearing them tell those stories was just like it just felt so strong, and it was, um, you know, uh, you know, as a, you know, as a director, sometimes you get worried like when there's like these long chunks of dialogue, like are people gonna be engaged? Is this gonna feel boring or something? But then when you have like great actors and they deliver, they tell the stories in a way that um, that is super engaging. Um, it just takes so much pressure off of off of me. Um, so I was very happy with those two scenes. Um, and then also just, you know, something that I always enjoy um, when I'm watching a movie, it's like at the very end, when um, Biasi finds Siki, you know, down, down in the rift, um, because uh, we didn't have, like, I don't remember exactly why, but I think Siki had to be in Reykjavik for, for like one day and because it had to be in regular for the other day. So we didn't have them. They're never actually there together. <laughs> so it's all shot with like, you know, only one person in the in the frame or like a, a double, which is my sister usually <laughs> being a sickest double. Uh, and like, I, I just enjoy watching it being like, okay, we, we somehow pulled it off. So it's, it feels seamless, but knowing uh, that it was kind of a headache to kind of figure out. You how were, it. you were Bjössi's double. At one time, yes, yes, my hand, really? your hand, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. What, what was the hand doing? <laughs> it was just kind of touching his shoulder a little bit. Uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't believable. It was really bad, Erling. You, <laughs> you should, you should stick to directing. <laughs> we, um, I couldn't tell. <laughs> Out of curiosity, this is like a completely random question. The, um, the, 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 the kid who played the voice of Leroy, like, was he just like a family member of yours or like, you know, you did a, like, you he asked your sister for his, her son to like do a voiceover or. Yeah, he, he's my, he's my, um, he's my, uh, cousin. He's, um, or not, not a cousin. Uh, he's, we only have the words we use for family members are, are, yeah. uh, very simple um yeah nephew my, maybe ne he's my uncle's son yeah that's a cousin, a a cousin. cousin. Yeah. yes 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 <laughs> a cousin is a good catch-all for all that the uh no i was, was kind of you know doing research for the the q a yeah I, I i see the imdb and i see oh the voice of leroy and i clicked on it. it's like one credit i go this I'm sure this kid is just a relative of somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, that I, it was more curiosity. Another thing I'm curious about, and kind of going back to the setting up of the landscapes, you know, was it a, was there any type of importance to the cell phone tower? Like, I, you, you always kind of saw it in certain shots, but like, there's like, especially there's, I'm forgetting what part of the movie, but let's say more towards the tail end, you're really up close. Actually, yeah, when, uh, when Gunner gets out of the car, um, you know, the, the cell phone tower is like, you know, right there. Is, right. is there like a like a certain symbolism you were trying to create there or are you just using this big man-made object in the middle of this great landscape that's just sticking up there? I mean, I would say there's like maybe kind of it's I, I wouldn't go as far as to say that it's like um, necessarily like a big symbol, but um, but a lot of I feel like, you know, one of the themes in the movie is like the communication between between them. Um, so it might fit into that, but um, but for the most part, it was just, it's so big and a lot of our locations were around it. So it was very hard to avoid right. having it in the frame. So we just decided like, okay, if we're going to use it, then, you know, let's, you know, frame it nicely and then keep it there. But it wasn't, it wasn't like um, anything planned. It, it kind of just, it was just there. Um, yeah. And then I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, again, this is curious and more, just more, more, more current times. Um, have you have all of you just like stayed in touch since the movie or is this really the first time the three of you been together in a while is this almost like a reunion for you or you know like um when was sort of. it's, yeah. been a, it's been a little while i've been in america for most of the most part since we did the movie um I, i'm back in iceland now because of COVID, but mm -hmm. um but yeah i haven't i i saw actually bsa just like a yeah. couple of years ago because my parents just moved into the house across the street from his. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> and me and Piersi work at the same theater, so we see each other all the time. And Yeah. Yeah, we... we, but, we, we, we in a long time since I've seen Erlinger. Yeah. I, need to, I need to have you guys over for dinner sometime soon. Yeah, oh, yeah definitely. Awesome. Great. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I think, uh, earlier, what, what part of the states do you live in? Do you like New York, LA, or? Yeah, uh, right now, or like before I came back here, I was in LA. Um, and before then, uh, when I was making Rift, I was living in New York. Yeah. Yeah, but I think you're much better right now in Iceland than you are in the United, <laughs> United States. Between. Yeah, uh, it, it's not the right decision to come back here. You, you made the right call, <laughs> I, I think, with that one. The um, no guys, um, like I said, I really enjoyed the film. I'm I'm positive our audience enjoyed it, enjoyed it too. It's a it's a very well made film. It's a it's a beautiful film. Um, actually, I think we did an incredible job in this Q and A talking about stuff, but actually not giving away the movie. So I, I'm gonna applaud all of us for for, for that. <laughs> in case someone is actually uh, seeing the Q and A before they watch the film. Um, and then with that, uh, I am going to show uh, the trailer for the film for those of the people who haven't watched the film so you can get a flavor for the film and then hopefully uh, enjoy it while we're streaming it with uh, Outshine. And again, on behalf of the staff and the board, thank you very much for being a part of this Q&A. And uh, hopefully that dinner does happen soon uh, and you guys can uh, enjoy your com company in person and not through the little uh, square window. Well, at least with early. <laughs> You know, Ziggy and, and you and you guys see each other all the time anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, I'll be playing the, the trailer now.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.